Redditors who have left your fiance at the altar. Why did you do it and what happened? My mum thought she had been left at the altar by not only my dad but the minister as well. She hated being the center of attention and didn't look up from the ground until she was almost down the aisle. When she did there was nobody waiting for her. Just then the door behind the altar flew open and my dad ran out with his kilt flapping around him followed by the minister. Apparently they had been drinking whiskey in the minister's office and hadn't realized the ceremony had started. This is maybe the most Scottish story I've ever heard. A guy I knew did this. He was a nice, laid back guy marrying a toxic person. I can't get into the details because I didn't know him too well, but apparently his friends had been telling him to break it off from the beginning. They had a final intervention for him the morning of the wedding and they finally convinced him to just leave. He showed up at this festival I was at during what was supposed to be his wedding. I saw him and said hey man. Aren't you getting married today and he had this kind of far away look and said yeah, that's not happening anymore. That's a pretty tough position to be in, when everyone is telling you that she's toxic but you can't see it yourself, especially when you're blinded by love, and or lust. Not at the altar, but I bailed just two days before we were headed to city hall. It was a green card marriage. On our second date she mentioned that her visa was expiring in six months. And I jokingly proposed to her. We continued dating. Were falling for each other. And that proposal became much more real as the deadline approached. I backed out at the last minute because we just didn't agree on a few details. Living arrangements and finances were easy. What couldn't be negotiated was how seriously either of us wanted to take those vows. I wanted to at least attempt to be a married, monogamous couple. She didn't really want to commit to that. If she falls deeper in love. Great. If not, we're just roommates. I miss her, but I think I dodged a bullet. I believe she would have vanished on me at some point, and I could be in a real jam over immigration crime. My aunt was in the exact same situation, but she went through with it. Her husband is a really cool guy but she wants to treat it like a real marriage and he simply does not. All I can do is keep my mouth shut. Didn't technically leave him at the altar but 10 days before the wedding I found out he was sleeping with someone else. Took me 2 days to decide not to get married. Then over the next 3 weeks I discovered he was a sex addict and had been seeing other people for the entire 9 years we were together. Got real close to being stuck in that nightmare. Thankful every day that I didn't go through with it. I'm dealing with a sex addict husband now. 6 months after the wedding. I wish I had known beforehand. This is the worst time of my entire life. One of my best friends broke her engagement only a month before her wedding after he joked about kicking her face in because he thought she hugged her stepbrother for too long at her mom's anniversary party. She dodged a huge bullet since he was arrested for assault a year later. Smart girl. Not quite at the altar, but I was left several weeks before my wedding. And by left, I mean my fiancé insisted he was stressed out with work and needed some time. When in reality he wanted to move his new, pregnant girlfriend into our house while I was out of town. So, the initial aftermath was indescribable. Frankly, about 85% of our wedding was set up. Calling and explaining this to vendors was a total blast. I lived in and was getting married in the south, so if I never hear oh bless your heart again, it'll be too soon. Not to mention the crippling depression I fell into and loss of a whole life I had built with someone I had trusted. I didn't leave my parents house for over a month afterward. I also had to deal with my family and his, and our friends, since he felt no reason to explain this to his side or anyone else, and just assumed I'd do it or they'd figure it out. To say it was a freaking disaster is a huge understatement. I'm still recovering, mostly financially, but therapy has done wonders. My ex has a lot of mental issues and hid them well, and I've gotten to a place where I know I'm better off and dodged a huge bullet. I also recently started seeing a man who makes my heart race when he walks into a room. It's a beautiful thing. Glad to hear you're in a better place. Good luck with everything that comes your way. It sounds like you've got the strength of will to handle it. I got left at the altar. He had spent the previous day spending a lot of time with his ex instead of helping me set up. I yelled at him about it because he was late and hadn't helped at all. He said he didn't want to get married because spending time with his ex made him realize I wasn't as fun as she was because I was uncomfortable with him doing drugs. 
kicked him out and still had the party. I told him to use that time to go home and pack up all his crap. He did. Then he got into crack and other crap so yay. Eater. So um. Yeah I don't really understand why I have to clarify that I'm not excited that my ex got into crack. But apparently I do. The yay was more of an enthusiastic, sarcastic remark. I didn't feel comfortable with him doing a bunch of drugs every day. He thought I was a buzzkill. We broke up. He got into crack. But not a good time for anyone. Last I heard. He's clean. Yay. And I actually mean it the time. Who knows if he still does weed or any of that. But he's off the hard drugs. Or so I've heard. And has gotten his life mostly on track. Still didn't want to be with him ever again. But I'm happy for him. I'm not a monster who wishes addiction on people. Honestly. It sounds like you dodge the bullet instead of him. I left my ex fiancé a month before the wedding. Backstory. I never actually proposed to her. She more or less did it to me. We were in a mall and she wanted to go to a jewelry store to look at engagement rings. I wasn't expecting to walk out of there with one but we did. The salesperson even took a just engaged Polaroid. She became more and more controlling and I couldn't take it anymore. After I left her, her friend texted me on the day of the supposed ceremony telling me the cake was delicious. My ex somehow managed to break into my email and asked me who a girl was in an email I received after I left her. I could understand her reasoning if it was before, but it wasn't. She also texted me a while after I left and told me she missed her period. An hour later, I got another text that said, Never mind, I'm pretty sure I dodged a bullet by leaving. You dodged a nuclear warhead. A buddy of mine did this and we were his accomplice. Holy frick I can't believe this happened 12 years ago. Anyway, a buddy of ours was going to marry this girl he had known for a few years. He was expressing doubt but racked it up to being nervous about marriage. The night before he broke down crying and thought he was making a mistake. We offered support and told him it would be okay. We said that if he didn't want to do it he didn't have to but we encouraged him to go through with it. Day of the wedding and everything is happening. The wedding has started and he is at the altar waiting. I don't know about other religions, but Mexican Catholic weddings have this moment before the bride comes out where it's quiet with anticipation and everything is just waiting. My buddy is sweating like a madman. My other friends and I notice and think he is about to pass out. Then it happens. The groom starts rocking back and forth. He looks like he is about to faint and he slowly starts side shuffling. My buddies look at each other and just know what is about to happen. The groom turns to his right and starts heading to the side door. Some people in the church notice and there is a gasp. He beelines to the door and goes outside. Me and my buddies follow him. At this point I just thought he needed air. Nope. He heads straight towards the sports car he had rented. We yell at him and he yells at us to get in and we do. He turns the car on and starts making his way out of the parking lot as the people in the church start to come out and yell. He takes off. We are yelling and screaming in the car and he has this dead serious look on his face. We end up in Vegas for the next few days. His phone is blowing up but he never answers it. The dude ends up joining the military and leaves to boot camp just two weeks after all of that happened. He stayed with us couch surfing for two weeks and disappeared from his bride, her family, and even his. Last I heard of him he had served multiple tours overseas and was part of a reckon unit. Haven't heard anything else from him for a few years now. None of us have actually. The bride was devastated of course. But last I heard she got married for reals this time and is very happy in her new relationship. Who are you freak? This would make an awesome movie. Wasn't me personally but, if anyone here has any objection, speak now or forever hold your peace. Woman in the back stands up and says the groom can't get married as he is my husband. Turns out the woman who objected and the groom were in fact married and tried to get divorced, but the divorce was never completed. So technically the groom was still married and the wedding did not proceed. I'm just trying to work out who invited her. I left her on the day before, because on a bachelor party for me, one of her friends who came with us as a keep an eye I won't cheat with a stripper drunkly confessed that he knew my fiance cheated on me with some douchebag for the last two months, because she wanted one last fling. I also found out that some of my friends knew about it but did not tell. She denied it, but eventually confessed and tried to justify. We broke of course. 
I ended up having to sue her for all the wedding payments I had to put out because I couldn't get back most of the down payments I put, and her family would not help with the wedding because they are cheap skunks. I won and got all my money back because she was afraid it will be known. I found out the douchebag is actually one of the bosses at he work, and he is married. To the last I heard of her, she got knocked up by said douchebag. He got custody on their child, and she is living with her parents. No job. Wasting her life away. It's always the ones that are super paranoid that you will cheat. Because they already are. People expect others to do what they do. I left a man at the altar. I was in my dress and getting ready to go to the chapel, when I realized I couldn't. I froze. I didn't love him as much as I craved the safety and security that being married would bring. I was fairly recently divorced and very young and scared. He eventually found a lovely woman and they are very happy together. I don't think either of us would have had that with each other. It's good to hear he found happiness elsewhere. Ultimately, you did the right thing. It's much harder and more expensive to get divorced than it is to break up. Hope you're okay now. Happened to two friends I used to know. He was totally smitten with her. She was highly insecure and they used to fight a lot bc she would accuse him of looking at other women and other crazy stuff. She's never not been in a relationship. And she always has the next dude lined up before she leaves the current one. Guess this time it was no different. Days before the wedding. She called it off. We find out she's shacked up with the next one within weeks. I think he totally dodged a bullet. She's on her third marriage currently. Something that is pretty surefire in human psychology is that if you're being accused of something, that person is probably doing that thing. My brother left his fiance a week before the wedding. Basically as soon as he proposed, all she cared about was the wedding. He wanted a very small wedding and she wanted a huge one. She was also very religious. Her father is a preacher, and he was not at all. She told him she wanted him to become a deacon in her father's church, and he told her no, he didn't want to do that. Pretty much they were disagreeing on everything up to that point. Finally he called it off. He said it was the hardest thing he's ever had to do but he knew he made the right decision. I clearly can't know for sure, but it seems to me that this didn't happen overnight. She was like this before, and he just ignored it or whatever. Sure, some people change when they get engaged or married, but I think most people make too many excuses during the relationship before and just start to really think about it after they've made a commitment. During rehearsal my now husband and I didn't actually rehearse our ceremony, but kind of just talked logistics with our bridal party. As a result, when our ceremony was over, we didn't really know how to officially end it. So we just kinda stood there awkwardly for a few seconds until he whispered to me, So are you just going to leave now? Meaning that I was supposed to let our exit. I, however, took it literally and just started walking. He claims that I ran away. I got about 10-15 feet away before he called out after me. Wait, I think you're supposed to take me with you. It was very embarrassing, but apparently everyone found it hilarious and started laughing. I will never live that down. And her husband can confirm she will never live it down. 3. I was the one who was left at the altar while she didn't show up. I would say that maybe she might give her story in this thread but I'm a freaking self-centered B isn't much of a story. <laughs> Haven't seen one from an arranged marriage setup so here goes. I backed out a week before the wedding. We were engaged in February and the wedding was to be 4 months later. He had to leave the South Asian country where I live so our interactions were strictly over phone. I am pretty sure I was a bit off a C in this situation. Talk to him very irregularly until the end of February and then I just couldn't. Should have been a huge red flag to him that his fiance hadn't talked in 3 months. I didn't have the courage to tell my folks so I just waited to see if he would back out. He didn't. And well, that's when I told him that I wouldn't be marrying him. After the invites had gone out, and preparations were in full swing. Ugh. I can't tell what exactly turned me off about him. I do know the fake American accent absolutely killed it for me, but the people I talk to about this tell me it isn't reason enough. Maybe arranged weddings are just not meant for some people. I am glad I didn't go through with it, though I could have handled it better I suppose. I've read studies that show our subconscious is noticing a lot more than can be communicated to our conscious rational selves. 
Sometimes this just results in us feeling uneasy, calling it intuition and being unable to explain more, when actually, there are very good reasons for our vague feelings of distress and unease. I dated a guy for 5 years and things were going well enough. When we were both approaching 30 I really wanted to get married and start a family, but he felt he wasn't ready. Somehow his family talked him into proposing and when he did, he said, well, I suppose we should get married next summer, that's it. When I later asked if he was going to get me a ring, he said, why, you already said yes. The whole planning process was like pulling teeth. He didn't want any part in it and I was not only paying for pretty much everything, I was also choosing all the vendors, decorations, music, etc. One night, I sat at the kitchen table, addressing all the wedding invitations by myself when he came in, picked one up and said, huh, those look kinda cheap and walked out. I had made them myself to save some money and he had never even seen them before. I cried, finished up addressing the letters. Mailed them the next morning and left him a few days later, because I felt that I deserved someone who was excited to get married to me. I had been worried about how our friends and family would react, but really, everyone was totally understanding and sweet about it. My grandma just said, oh, these things happen his uncle told me. I was engaged once, but then she ran away and became a nun. At least she left me for Jesus. Seriously, no one gave me a hard time about it at all. Even the vendors were very supportive. As for my then fiancé, he was sad and cried. But ultimately, I think he was relieved that he didn't have to get married. All in all, he wasn't a bad guy. On the contrary, he was a total sweetheart. But the thought of settling down and taking on responsibility scared him to death somehow. Well, all this was 5 years ago. He's been single ever since and I am in the middle of planning a wedding again. This time, my fiancé is involved in every step of the process. He's talked to bakeries and seen more possible venues than I have. He tells me he can't wait to be my husband and watching him practice his new signature does certain things to my heart. I have never regretted calling off the other wedding, because this is how getting married should be like. At least she left me for Jesus. That's amazing haha. <laughs> It may end up being me unless I can deal with some issues before that. Just don't love my fiancé anymore. But he has told me on numerous occasions, including after cheating on me, that if I left him he'd probably kill himself. I can't deal with that kind of pressure and guilt and just don't know what to do about it. I don't have anywhere else to go or the means to support myself right now so I just feel trapped. I just want you to know that whatever happens is not your fault. He is being manipulative by trying to guilt you into staying. Whether he does it or not is not your fault and I highly suggest trying to find resources to help you get out. I think this just nearly happened to me, or not. It's very confusing. My partner and I have been together 5 years. During this time we talked about getting married. Actually, he did something amazing one day which made me realize my search was over so I jumped the gun a bit and asked him if he would be up for marrying one day and he said yes. Other times we've talked about it he's always said it's on the cards. I don't want to nag the poor guy but after 4-5 years you do get to wondering. I never knew there was a problem. Well there's a problem. It seems he doesn't remember any of those conversations. He doesn't believe in marriage. He's never believed in marriage ever, and I dunno. I just felt something go snap in my heart. So I love him so I stay, but I cry every other night. I don't know why marriage is important to me, but it just is. Always has been. He's always known this too. I try not to let him know because it just causes arguments. Once when it got too much I tried to leave, but he does this emotional blackmail thing where he says he's going to leave his very decent job and go and work in a war zone. Phones up his family, all sorts of crap, so I can't leave. I guess you can get jilted at the altar without actually being near one. Gaslighting and manipulation. Yeah get out while you can. I have a friend who went through with the wedding but left about 6 weeks later. She danced with her current husband at her first wedding more than her first husband. She implied once that I should have talked her out of the wedding. But she was already legally married to the guy and would have probably lost a lot of money backing out of the big wedding last minute. So why not give it a shot? I wasn't aware of the extent of the issues they were having either. My sister was left at the altar by my best mate and I was best man. 
He met my sister through me and they went out with each for 2 years and were engaged for a year before the big day. We're in the church, at the front, waiting for the bride with about 15 minutes to go. He says he need the toilet and walks to the back of the church. A minute or so later it hits me that the toilet's under the back of the church and I start to worry. So go looking for him. He's not in the toilets, not around the church, nowhere to be found. My best mate had legged it. We didn't see or hear from him 3 days, his own family for 2 days and by then, he was in Europe somewhere staying with a friend, where he's been ever since, 3 years now, he's never made any effort to explain, even to my sister. I hope you and your sister realized better before than after, at least there wasn't the legal paperwork, combined finances and eventual divorce to figure out. It isn't gonna make you feel any better, but thinking how much worse it could have been is the best way to come to terms with it imho. I very much doubt this is a common occurrence. If I wasn't sure I would back out way before getting the dress and all the expensive shite. However I have a cousin who basically did this. Sort of like 3 times even. First time, guy 1. Everything ready and had bridal showers etc. But she was talking to aunts and family members. Realized her guy was kinda into pee and stuff, and broke it off before the wedding. She kept all the presents. Second time, guy too, got engaged, broke it off. Don't really remember why at all. Third time, same as guy one. Absolutely no idea cause really I was fed up at this point with even caring. At this point though I realize I should have a lot more sympathy for her cause that seems to indicate actual problems that must be rather distressing for her. This woman who used to come and visit my parents when I was younger was left at the altar. She is one of those cases where you will say karma got to her. This woman was a reason or so many divorces. She and her family members meddle in everyone's business. For example if you have a finance. Her and her cousins will make sure your fiance dumps you by telling him about. Made up lies. When she was left at the altar it was an aha moment for everyone. You one of those come to Jesus moments. But she got married to another guy a year after that. Her cousin also tried to be a bride at another woman's wedding. LOL. I wasn't sure that I wanted to marry Sophie. I was confused. We went on vacation and I was initially planning on proposing to her. I had bought a ring and everything. After much thought I decided not to go through with the proposal but while I was out of the hotel room she found the ring. I didn't have the heart to explain that I changed my mind. After that I just kind of went through the motions. On our wedding day I ended up hiding in the upper gallery of the church with my best man and roommate Jeremy. We just kind of hid up there while everyone looked for us until eventually he had to pee and we got discovered. But Sophie was devastated and I think I'm just going to end up living with Jeremy forever now. This might just be how it is meant to be. Me and Jeremy living together until one of us dies or we just frick each other. Similar but relevant. One of my exes asked me if I wanted to get married after about 3 weeks of knowing her. I spent the next month or so trying to figure out a good way to dump her. Because that set off my crazy alarm and I didn't want to break her. My dad actually jilted his fiancé. My dad was fairly young and was arranged to marry someone that was supposed to be the most beautiful girl in the area. He worked on offshore rigs so he did not have any contact with the girl. With the exception of a few photos and a couple of long distance phone calls, which were really expensive. When he got home, she came to visit and he realized that she was far heavier than what they showed in the pictures. When he pointed this out, no one seemed to think it was a big deal but my dad was pretty unhappy. He went as far as talking to the girl and the girl's parents, asking them to respectfully call it off but they were adamant about going through with the wedding. It was during that conversation that the family admitted that the girl was illiterate. She wasn't interested in school so they took her out early and sent her to study tailoring instead. She had not even learned how to handle money or read and write. My dad didn't want to embarrass the girl or her family, so he didn't tell anyone about what he learned everyone had assumed that she had college level education but she actually went to a vocational school that was housed in the college building. A few nights before the wedding, my father's cousin, a friend, and his younger brother helped him escape. Another person volunteered to marry the girl, so she still got married on the day. So it all went well. 
This is going to sound like hearsay but I met a girl who was left by her fiancé the day of her wedding. He chose this time to inform her that actually he was already married and had a family. Obviously he was an extremely toxic person. Possibly a psychopath. Definitely a narcissist. She was devastated as you can imagine. But it is good that he saved her the humiliation of going through the wedding and a lifetime of misery. I was dealing with my own narcissistic psychopath. So this was her I got through it story. We were going to elope. And I realized it was stupid a few days before. I was 18. He was 21. He was also very selfish due to his chronic depression. And I was very vulnerable due to my anxiety. I wasn't equipped to help him deal with his mental illness. And he wasn't ready to deal with mine. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.